but yeah. Oh, um, so yeah, we can uh, we're gonna jam out a bit on Messenger today, as I mentioned. For those of you guys that for those of you guys that are just piling in uh, or just just getting here, we're gonna plan it on talking talking Messenger. Uh, potentially continue to add to this doc, uh, looking at like maybe pooling a lot of our responses, conversations we're having. Uh, Cause we know that's a, a big piece. A lot of people struggle with. I know it's something that I've struggled with for a very long time. I created a lot of problems in my own business in regards to messaging and, and actually closing sales. So kind of the goal for today. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'll be a, a solid reminder. Like Nate said, we'll build this up and you guys can use it as a guide. We'll just keep adding to it and making it better and better. Um, it'll almost be like a, a semi-cheat sheet for y'all. Um, but here's here's one thing to remember as we get ready to you know rock and go over it. Honestly, me and Nate, we could we could do more in Messenger, you know, if if we ever wanted to ramp things up, but the biggest thing or the biggest reason why we don't have to go hard in messenger is because we go hard on content, be it short form and long form. You know, if, if you've looked at, you know, anything we put out, we literally try to give like the utmost highest value possible that handles all the, most of the objections. Um, it handles most of the questions. It lets folks know how we operate and what our process looks like, what we do do and what we don't do. So by the time we do talk to people, it's literally usually only a couple of messages before, you know, a sale happens or a client is, you know, brought on board. So just keep that in mind. You can you can have a fine balance and do, you know, pretty good content and then be in Messenger quite a bit. Or you can just do really good content and, you know, Messenger is, you know, not not as much or vice versa. You could go. Uh, less on content and go harder in the dms either way it's going to be up to you as you play your strong points <clears throat> nate nate's told me which you know i never seen it until nate and jamie and jacob told me but my tonality is really good when i'm talking to folks when i'm doing lives um sending them voice clips and things like that um and it's because my, my confidence shines through i've done enough things uh, and learned enough things where it's like i'm really confident in the shit that i say uh, and I, I do that without knowing that I'm doing it. Some folks might look at my confidence as cockiness or me having an ego, but I'm one of the most humble sons of bitches you'll ever meet because I'll never forget where I came from. So just keep in mind, heavy content, it'll be uh, less heavy DMs and then finding that balance. So just uh, something for you guys to think about and chew on. And you have, you know, you bring up, Flip brings up a really good point is you have the ability to kind of, do both right so like one that really comes back one one example that comes back to me is is like a good example of this is like demi right she absolutely loved combos she's really good in conversations so a lot of her business's weight would get put into dms right whereas we do a lot of like content leverage and less dms so i think it's a, a big part of it's also figuring out about what style vibes with you the most so that way you can kind of lean into that for now. And it doesn't mean you can't change it or you can't like change it depending on the piece of content or, uh, you know, what's going on in the business. You have the ability to kind of pick and choose and, and go in different directions. Um, but it, it's not like, I guess, linear, right? Like everybody in here is going to be a little bit different. So I think figuring out your own style of, of how you want to operate, especially in the beginning is a big one. Uh, you know. The 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 caveat is like obviously if you put a bit more weight into the conversations in unison with the content, uh, it's going to be quicker. And what I mean by that is when you when you're putting a, a big weight on on uh, content, you know you're kind of getting people into your your content and they're building these relationships with you at scale. Uh, so it can naturally take a little bit longer for that relationship to get built versus like if you were actively talking to them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you can kind of accelerate that, the speed of that relationship, right? Which will then make the sale happen quicker. Um, so a couple, just a couple of things to note about that, right? Um, now, the most challenging part about breaking down conversations, leveraging scripts, frameworks, uh, is the fact that conversations are not linear. 
no conversation is going to be the exactly Please the same <laughs> because <Thank you. laughs> everybody <laughs> is uh, a different human being, right? You're you're not you don't want to have a robotic conversation that's just super sterile, right? Literally, it sounds really cliche, but just fucking talking to people, just talk to them, right? Obviously, you can be calculated with the questions or the, or the types of things you're talking about, but uh, I remember when I was early in, into the Facebook game, it was, I was trying to follow this, this script verbatim, and I was wondering why it wasn't converting sales, and it's like, looking back at my business now, it's like, if I was on the other side of that conversation, I wouldn't want to buy anything, right? Like, just interrogating them. Um, so a big couple things that will play a big factor in how easy the conversations will actually be, uh, or how quick the sales will happen, uh, how much content they've consumed from you. That's a big one. Uh, the more content somebody's consumed, the deeper the relationship is, the easier the sale actually is, right? Um, how deep they feel like they, how, how deep they feel like they know about you, who you are and what you do. This kind of goes hand in hand with how much content, content they've consumed. Uh, the belief that you're the one that has the ability to help them fix what they're struggling with. Another thing, if they're even aware that they're struggling with something is a big one. Some people might not even be problem aware. They might not see that they have an issue in their business um, or, the, or they're so sold on the belief that the thing will work and they just want to continue to do the exact same thing, even though they haven't got results with that thing yet. Right. Um, to an extent, an internal belief uh, in their self that they actually have what it takes slash confidence or enough pain in where they're currently at. And what I mean by that is uh, they have to a either believe in themselves that the, Hey, they can go out and they can build a business. They can do X, Y, Z, or they have to be so burnt out on where they're currently at in their life. Like, Hey, I'm sick and tired of working 80 hours a week and never seeing my kids. And I need to do something different, right? There has to be something that drives them to, to go out of their comfort zone. Otherwise they would just stay in their little, little box. Right. Dang old muted. Um, these next little four, four areas to pay attention to. Uh, this is going to help you make more sales in the DMS, not like immediately, but over time. All right. So four main things is one, like you're building trust, not, you know, following the top of the dock here where, you know, what they're consuming of you. That's what's going to make you talking to them uh, that much more smooth. So, and you're, you're building the relationship through the rapport, things that you're talking about. We do want to get to know folks. We don't just want to be like, hey, what problems you got? Um, you know, if you got this problem, you can buy this thing. That's, that's not what we're doing. But that comes right back to number two. We want to get to know them and we want to find out what their for real problem is that they have. And it might be more than one. Right. That will allow you to see what you have as as far as your your arsenal when it comes to offers and see if you can really help them. Um, you know, I've, I've said this a lot. If if someone has a problem I can't solve, I'm not going to make them an offer. I'm going to tell them about a person uh, that I might know in my network that has an offer to solve that problem. And what that's gonna do is just build goodwill. And if they go and get their other problem solved by another person, they're gonna remember that I helped them get to what, what they needed. And if they get to a point where they need something from me, they'll easily come back. But when we're talking to folks, we don't have to go straight for the jugular. We can find out what they're dealing with. What have they tried? What are they going through? What's their biggest bottlenecks? And nobody's going to tell you outright, hey, what are, what are you struggling with? Nobody's going to come out and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. They're just not going to do it. So what we what we really need to do is ask them a different question and position it differently. Instead, you can say, hey, what, what have you been doing? What are you currently doing right now? And how's it going for you? And let them tell you what it is that they're doing. And, the, and you'll you'll be able to see what the struggle might be. And then you can dig a little bit deeper. So and on three, getting you're trying to get to a point where you can softly share a solution that you have, right? Or, you know, nonchalantly talk about an offer that would help them 
with where they're at and what they're currently doing or what they currently want to change. Right. And when I say softly, it's like you don't have to be like, hey, well, I got this offer I could sell you. It's like, hey, you know, we've we've helped a couple of folks, um, you know, deal with that exact thing or something very similar to what you're dealing with and let them know what it is that helped those people. Like, yeah, we, we had a couple of folks that had this this same problem or similar problem. And, you know, we got them access to X, Y, Z. And, you know, within X amount of time, they were able to overcome that problem and, you know, get to X result. Um, is that something you, you might want to hear about? You know, if not, all good. Right. So there's there's number three. Um, and lastly, if it's a good fit and they say, yeah, you know, I would love to hear about it. They just qualified themselves be of one through three and you can just tell them about the offer that you have. Right. It's the biggest, most important thing that we're trying to do in you know combos when it comes to making sales is. And I've been saying this since 2020 when I was just getting in the game. This is how long I've been saying it about three years now. Our job is to help people make the best decision for themselves. That's what our job is. Even if that means them not buying from us, we want to help them make the best decision for them based on where they are, what they want to do and the problems that they have that they want to solve. That's all our job is very, very simple. And if you put people first, that is going to speak absolute volumes for the type of person that you are. I see so many folks that are just like, they'll, they'll sell anything to anyone. And then they wonder why they don't have retention or they wonder why folks aren't getting results. Cause you didn't give a fuck about what problem they actually had. And you were just trying to sell them the thing that you had for sale. Versus if we actively listen, we'll fuck around and serve people and get them what they actually need. It's crazy how much sense that makes. I'll uh, I'll keep rolling if you want me to, Nate. Yeah, go ahead, my man. Um, two main things that'll put you like light years. Think of Buzz Lightyear. Put you light years ahead of people, uh, other folks that are trying to sell via the DMs is the ability to to read people, you know, through a DM combo, and and be a be aware of how they're responding, right? If you send someone a a paragraph this big and they send you back a one word thing, they're not quite engaged as they need to be. Okay. <clears throat> no worries, Michelle. Um, if someone's extremely short with you, there's, they're not quite pre-sold on something specific, right? They might've, you might've missed the mark on, on the read, or they just don't understand something the way that they want to just yet. So they're being short. Um, could be something internal, could be skepticism. It could be a, a handful of things or just the relationship isn't at that point yet. Um, but you but you need to understand and, and be able to look and see how they're responding and act accordingly. Right. Like, hey, if if right now is not a good time, um, I'm glad to chat back to you if you're not trying to do X, Y, Z. Right. Like all good. Um, the The interaction that you're having with someone who just jumped into your group yesterday, who hasn't seen any of your shit other than the video that brought them there. Um, it's going to be quite different from someone who's been, you know, reading, consuming or watching content for three months, right? It's just going to be different. They're not going to be at that level of ready to buy unless they've been following you for some time. Um, and when you're able to, to read these quickly enough, uh, you'll, you'll have, almost have like a superpower because you've got the ability to figure out where you need to pivot, what you need to point them to extra resources or trainings you can get in front of them that will help get them pre-sold more on you. That's, that's like the secret sauce, right? Yeah. It'll, it'll make the, com I mean, it brings me back like the number of times that I would like run through conversations where people were giving me like one word answers and I would just continue to push on through the conversation and end up sending them an offer uh, and then wondering why they didn't buy. And it's like, there were, there was, they were just kind of, being courteous and having this chat with me uh they, they didn't really have any interest in having a conversation so the big one as far as uh, it'll give you the ability to like back off a bit somebody's really which happens a lot in the online space right and it also depends on how how that conversation was started 
uh, people's walls are up high, which to be fair, there's a lot of things out there that could make people skeptical, right? How you generated 80 million leads in four minutes with chat GBT, GPT, you know, like whatever. Um, you you got you to kind of be able to read and, and look on a deeper level in that what's going on in the conversation, how people are interacting with you. Um, because if they're not, if they're not responsive enough to actually like have a chat with you, think about it like on a deeper level. Like, do you think they're going to be open to pulling out their wallet and buying something from me? Right. It's, um, so where to generate more conversations. This is a really cool, powerful concept that I started using a while back. Uh, the engager outbound, uh, off of reels, likes, post likes, story views, any and all post engagement, uh, new group members. Uh, I literally cannot count the number of sales that I've made uh, from a simple, hey, I appreciate the comment on my recent post. Um, are you insert topic of post, right? So the, a good example is like, if I put out a piece of content that was talking about uh, sales calls or something like that, right? S sending over a message and being like, hey, I appreciate the engagement on my recent post. Uh, are you currently doing... Uh, sales calls, right? Or or just starting that touch point with the person in Messenger. So the thing is with like this, the Engager Outbound, specifically, I'm not necessarily using it to sell them a product right now, right? It's like establishing another layer or another connection through the content that I've put out. Uh, but also you can use it for offer specifics. So if I put out an offer post, uh, you know, hey there, I appreciate the comment on this recent post. Saw you were looking to catch some more information on, you know, group juice. You know, just just starting the conversation, right? If you if you guys are struggling to facilitate enough combos or even have uh, enough conversations to like start building your pipeline, so that way you have the opportunity to start sending more offers. Start sending messages like this, right, to people that are watching your stories, the people that are liking your reels. Uh, any and all engagement that you're getting on your content, start messages with them. And, and it's not it's not a directly, hey, uh, I'm trying to sell you this product right this second. I want to plant a seed in a relationship. And then what that's going to do is, one, if they're talking to you in Messenger, they're going to see more of your content. You might, And then it's going to flywheel effect and start creating a deeper relationship with people because they're going to see more of you. Uh, and some of them, uh, it, it's like a simple... The number of times I've sent messages like this and it's like, hey, I appreciate the comment on my recent post, right? How's everything going? And they just open up instantly. Like, yeah, I've been watching your content for, for six weeks and, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm getting ready to jump into group juice, right? And in mm -hmm. that relationship, like, I wouldn't have even known unless I would have started the message with them, right? Do you, Georgie, you unmuted? Do you have, do you have something? Yeah, just a quick one. Sorry. Um, you know, when you said about um, like messaging people who like off your reels or engage in your content and things. Mm -hmm. So if you're messaging people, sometimes if you're obviously not friends, your messages are going into like the spam. I have a lot of people who've reached out via other groups that have come to me and said, oh, you know, can I have information on blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, but because and I've sent it to them and I've told them I've sent it to them, but they're like, well, I haven't got a message. So I'm having to say to them, you know, you check your spam box. How how far can you really go with it if someone's, you know, reaching out to you on your reels or content and they're not getting your message? Would you advise adding them first, then messaging them? Because I add people, but then they don't accept and they have nothing from me. Yep. How would you go about that? There's there's two things that you can do. Um, one, you can you can hit them double and triple in the comments. Like say for example, Facebook Reels. Um, yeah. This is this is why it's super important to tag your group in the comments. You know, like yeah. the triple threat we talk about in Group Juice. But if you're sending them something via DM and they comment to get it, and then you respond saying, "Hey, I just sent you a message." Um, make sure you check your spam. Folder. You can even drop a picture of where they need to click to get the message. I had this happen when I first started doing Facebook reels and I, I found like hundreds of messages from people that I just completely missed because it was in my hidden message request. So that's one way. <clears throat> um, the easiest we've found is 
giving yourself like a, a few seconds to or either text boxes in the in the video itself or doing doing reply videos. <clears throat> you can do only do uh, reply videos to comments on TikTok, but yeah. it's yeah. not to say yeah. you couldn't tag that person if you do one with their question on a Facebook reel. But telling them like the last 15, 10 to 15 seconds of your video, it's like, hey, I'm going to put this in the comment section. After you comment, I'm going to reply to you and say, you know, message sent. Here's where you need to find the message. Or go ahead and do a, a screen share video um, and put on your reels and save the link somewhere. So you can say, hey, I didn't, I didn't get your message. Oh, well, watch this video. I'll show you how to find the message I sent you so you can get ABC thing. And you want to you want reincorporate why they would want to follow this and why they want to get your message so they can get the thing that you sent. If it's a lead magnet or some kind of information, ebook, uh, et cetera, um, that's that's how I would tackle it. You you could hit them up as many times as you want. Um, if you do it two or three times and you told them how to get it, I'd I'd reply to their thing again so they get tags. Hey, did did you find the message? Uh, do you still need help finding it? Um, obviously, you wouldn't want to do that if you have thousands of comments, but that's where your your video would come into play. Or you can you can also flip it onto its head and get them to send you the message. Uh, you know, instead of hey, I have this thing and I just sent it to you, you could be like, hey, send me, you know, drop me a send me over a hashtag with uh, send me over a message with you know hashtag I want it, and, and then I'll I'll send you the the X thing. Right. Because then they're coming to you. So that's automatically going to put you in their inbox versus yep. you sending them an outreach message and it gets sent to message requests or spam. If they're sending you the message, it's going to, yeah, I mean, you know where to find it. Uh, so there's a few different ways that you can do it. Uh, usually I would add them first if I'm going to be sending them the message. Uh, if it's like off of reels and stuff like that, a lot of the people like in your group, uh, there are, you're probably already going to be friends. Story views, you're only going to be able to see people that you're already friends with anyways, or they follow you. Uh, so you'll be able to send them a message directly off of the story anyways. Uh, you can see their profile picture. You can just send them a picture and it'll go right into their inbox. Um, but, Thank you. Uh, Pombo Necromancer, for those of you guys that don't know what that is, that's like a, a nerdy thing about bringing you know good things back to life. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is like for old conversations that maybe have died off, right? Hey, name. I know it's been a minute since we've chatted, but I recently dropped insert thing you just did over in my community and thought you might get some value from it based on our previous conversation. That's something you want to check out. Let me know. Uh, this is a good one. If if you want to like start reigniting conversations and and like obviously go value forward. Don't jump back into somebody's inbox and be like, hey, are you ready to buy this thing yet? Like if you have something you just put out in your group or if you're going to run a live next week or you're going to do a training or you put out a post that's really valuable, like start capitalizing on the energy you're putting in in your business and the things that you're creating, right? Like you guys probably have tons of conversations that have died off and you could go back in and be like, hey, I just ran a live in my group breaking down how to generate your first 100 leads on TikTok. Like, is that something you want to check out? Some people aren't ever going to respond, but there will be people that are like, yeah. And then they're going to come into the group. They're going to watch the training. And then the, the, the buyer's journey resumes, right? Um, something silly. Uh, fun fact. This is actually the first message I ever sent Thaddeus. Uh, he's not on here, but uh, this, is, this is where mine and Thaddeus' relationship started was with this exact line and picture. Um, you know, obviously, we've, we've dealt with a lot of trauma since then because... I don't use co coffee cups that small anymore. Um, <laughs> um, a voice note, because, because they're going to have to open it, they have to listen to it. Then These will usually get a higher response rate. Uh, bearing they actually see the message, because as Georgie mentioned, is you know, some, some, some of the, some people, you're not going to get everybody to open your message, right? There is going to be a portion of people that do not see it. They don't get it. Uh, what I usually do is with outreach messages, I'll send the outreach message and then I'll archive it instantly. Yeah. Right. Sometimes. So you, what I'm doing is I'm sending an outreach and then I'm archiving the message. So it gets pulled out of my inbox. Uh, and then I kind of just leave it up to them. 
right? And then if yeah. they comment on another post, and then when I go to send them another message, it'll come back. Uh, but that's yeah. a good way to keep your inbox kind of clean and not full has, of things where people haven't responded. Has anyone else uh, sent people short videos? Um, let me know. I can only see four of you, but if you haven't, um, yeah, speaking of, of Chantel, so, you know, Chantel, she chats to folks for us behind the scenes inside of our groups um, and kind of, you know, moves relationships a little bit further. So this is something that you guys can do on your own, too. So, you know, to I'll hit on both of these really quick. I meant to I meant to add that in here, but I did not. Shame on me. Um, Chantel was having a little bit of trouble of folks like asking, like, hey, is, is Chantel working with you know, you guys and group juice, you know, she sent me a message. So we recorded uh, a couple short videos for Chantel to send where we were basically confirming like, Hey, you know, if Chantel is chatting to you, you know, definitely want to listen to her. Um, she helps us with X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, she's super legit, blah, blah, blah. Um, you can also do this, uh, you're on your own as well. Um, and if, if you don't want to, make them all personalized you can do one that's or a couple that's kind of generic where you record a video um for folks when they join your group you know it could be something as simple as like you know hey uh you know flip just checking in wanted to let you know that i am a real person and i'm glad to have you in the group just wanted to make sure you got access to you know the free workshop and all that good jazz let me know if you have any questions um i, I respond to everyone personally as you can see and I'm looking forward to, to chatting to you, seeing if I can help you in any way. Have a great day. Super quick, super easy. You can do a couple variations of that. Um, that way it's super personalized. Um, and if, if it's not a lot of, uh, if it's not a lot of volume you're dealing with, you can even personalize them and throw their name in there in the beginning. Hey, Sally, just wanted to, you know, send you this quick video, welcome you to the group, you know, and, and go on and, and do it that way. But if you don't say names, you know, you have two or three variations. You can use that to send to people. Um, I've done that in the past and it's gotten really, really good responses. Um, and if if you've got anything like that that you want to test and try, I would absolutely encourage you to do so. You'll get a better response rate because they'll see a notification saying, you know, such and such sent you a video. And like Nate said, with the voice clips, they have to open it or hit play to see what it is that you said. Voice clips go the same. You'll have some folks say, oh, you shouldn't send voice clips. Um, I'll just have to disagree because people love fucking voice clips. All right. Yes, Andy, you can send videos in Messenger. I did not know that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm so weird. But, hey, let me tell you something that just makes me so happy that you just said that because I had some, um, what you call that, Nate? Necromancer things. Mm -hmm. I had to, I had a couple of people in my group that I was just like, man, people, are you ever, I sent them GIFs. I was like, Hey, I was like, you know, for a long time. And finally I thought I'm going to send a, a voice note. And I did. And almost everybody responded to that. Oh, just yeah. saying, I mean, nothing more than what I'd been saying. In yeah. It, it puts you into it. Because like, if if they haven't consumed a lot of you, especially if they haven't consumed a lot of your content or any of your videos, they're they're able to put a voice, you know, an accent to the face that they see. Um, well, so, I mean, I'm making a sale from one of those. She's going to buy group juice at the end of the month. So there you go. And that just all started from that voice note. Yep. There you go. Pr more proof in the concept. Like yeah. you should. You should reply to, you know, any of those negative ass people you got and be like, hey, um, I don't know about you, but, you know, sometimes I make five hundred dollars in a day by doing this stuff. You don't understand. Uh, bless your little heart. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. I'll be hitting people with that quick. <laughs> um, another really good one is stroking their ego. Uh, people are posting content because they want feedback. Compliment them. Uh, it's a really good way. Obviously, this would be hard to do if you have a lot of volume, but if you're talking to people, they're posting content, they're posting stories, go like screenshot what they're doing and then give them a compliment inside of Messenger or respond to their story. 
right? If you look at a deeper level, that's why people are posting content, right? They want feedback, give them feedback, right? Compliment them on, on, and, and like something to think about too, is like, even if you have a product that helps somebody grow their group and monetize their community, that does not mean you can't compliment them on their group or them, their content that they're creating. Right. And, and I know that's like a disconnect is like, people don't necessarily want to like compliment somebody because it might take away from the opportunity to sell something. Um, but if th this will get people to open up relatively easy, right? Like, Hey, you killed it with that. It, like you screenshot their post. Hey, you absolutely killed it with this, this piece of content, right? I absolutely loved what you said about here. It looks like you're absolutely killing it on Facebook. Like they're going to open up. They're going to want to start talking about themselves. It's natural. Yeah. How many of y'all seen Moana? Don't lie. Right? Of course. You got kids who've seen 800 it. times. <laughs> yeah. Take it Take it down to the scene where they went to the, uh, where they had to go fuck with the crab. And, you know, Maui <laughs> was, was telling Moana, I was like, you got to get the crab to talk about himself. Right? People are the same way. Um, not all people, but most people. You basically want to. We want to break the barrier to let them know, hey, we're a real person. We actually give a shit. We want to, you know, hear where you are, what you're doing. Um, we we really genuinely want to know, because the more we know, and the more closer we are, and the better we understand them, the the more ability we have to recommend what's actually going to help. Right. It's like, if I don't know enough about you, I, I'm in no position to make any kind of offer or share any kind of solutions. So that's what we want to understand, right? <clears throat> uh, re relationship Accelerator. Um, we'll grab Flip's face, his group welcome posts and put it here. I just haven't put it there yet. Um, those who are coming into the community, the ultimate goal, punch them in the face with, a val with some value um, and elicit a response so you can start identifying where they're currently at will give you scope to either a funnel them into more value in the community so if somebody's like super far back on the spectrum they're, they're not ready to buy they don't they don't know what affiliate marketing is right you like the ultimate goal is to figure out where they're at as fast as possible so you can figure out what direction you need to go in the conversation right um so yeah push them into value in the community right things you're doing maybe videos content uh or move them to an offer if they're uh, problem slash solution aware, right? So figuring out kind of where they're at as fast as possible. So that way you have the clarity of where you need to direct that conversation, right? If somebody's like, yeah, I've been, I've been watching your TikToks for, you know, three months. Like, I absolutely love your content. I've been watching you for a week, right? Like it, it's going to change how you, you, you proceed with that conversation. If somebody's like, hey, I just saw you yesterday. Right. I just saw a piece of content. I don't even know what affiliate marketing is. Right. I'm not going to try to move them into a high ticket offer right now, right? This second. Right. You could, you could if you want to be like, you know, very proactive in the DMs, you could walk them through that whole process. But as we mentioned in the beginning of this, we're more about content leverage and kind of letting our content do a lot of the selling for us uh, and less proactiveness inside of the DMs. Um that that's kind of the way that we operate our business, but, but that's not to say you can't do both. Right. So what I, what I just put on there guys is my actual message. I just pulled it from a message that someone hasn't opened yet, but this is, this is my exact uh, outreach message that I send. Um, and I do change it up periodically to match, uh, you know, whatever's going on for the week and whatnot. So, you know, feel free to model this, 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 uh, this exact message gets a, a pretty good response from those that see the message, right? So you can kind of see what I say, how I say it, things that I have in there, um, you know, towards the, towards the end, I make sure I link the, the guide section so folks can get straight to it. And if I, if I dropped a post, like I actually linked uh, today's, uh, the other day's posts. I sent this a couple of days ago, but I linked whatever I posted that day as well. Right. So I'm just driving more traffic to, you know, current so they can start seeing more of my shit. That's really all I'm trying to do, which is why I don't spend a lot of time in messenger because I'm always doing content loops. Right. If you guys have uh, slept on it or missed it, 
<clears throat> definitely want to utilize content loops. Um, if you wrote an awesome, badass post last month, link back to it. If it's got some super relevant things or points, pillars that you're covering, uh, link back to it a few times. If, if you're having a, a brain fart on what kind of content to create today, go and grab a link from a solid ass post that you put out that people engaged on or loved or you got good feedback and just link back to it, right? You'll, you'll drive more traffic, get more combos, uh, you'll, you'll spark new interest um, and potentially get folks that have been inactive in your group um, to you know, start engaging and consuming you again. So feel free to model that however you guys want. <clears throat> Can I ask a question, please? Yes. So will you do this bit to like everyone that comes into your group? Obviously, you will change that up depending on sort of where they where they are in their journey. Obviously, if they're completely new and they don't know anything, then you'd send something similar to this. Um, you, so if, if I wanted to do it, if I wanted to do it better, mm -hmm. I could uh, I could personalize it more. But this is this is an automated message. This is the oh. only this is the absolutely only automated message that I send. It's the very first DM. Um, and that's that's via group convert of how I have it set up. So once I accept, you know, and approve people in my group, this message I can like the other day I, I let in, I think like 30 some people. I clicked one button and it sent this message to all 30 people and it spaces is out sends one message every minute so over 30 minutes it's done this and i've only clicked a button one time okay yeah because i feel at the moment when people come in i'm kind of like welcome to the group like there's not really much yeah right i do check my welcome post but i like the idea of like an actual message that feels more personalized to them even though it's kind of indirectly to everyone if that makes sense yep you can you can go through like here's here's how my brain works like when y'all look at this outreach message that I send, um, mm -hmm. when I look at other people's or I look at other people's content, I overanalyze pretty much everything. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to look at this message and be like, all right, um, I made it personal. I got their name, said, hey, you finally made it to my group. If you left just your email, you should have one from me shortly. I'm causing curiosity and intrigue. If they did leave their email, they're going to check it. So there's one. Next, I say, if you don't know, Right. So they're going to be questioning. All right. Well, do I know this? So they have to keep reading. I help folks dial in that a unique plan to really grow and monetize. So I'm just hitting on things that people want. They want to grow. They want to monetize and make money. Um, their social media as affiliates, coaches and brand owners without the fluffy shit. So I hit my target market in those three words. And I also let them know I, I don't do fluffy. And they also get to see that I use profanity. So if I'm going to offend you, I'm going to do it in the first message. All right. Um, now I tell them right here. I say I have a quite a few uh, paid offers to help with this when the time is right. So yeah. I'm totally disconnected from letting them know, hey, I, I sell shit. I have something to sell. Um, but for now, hit the guide section to get up to speed with our free workshop showing you how I built the business that puts me at home with my wife and kids. So I'm hitting on more pains and more desires, right? And as I come down, it's like, hey, uh, I'm curious how you found my group. So I'm doing my own market research there. Most people say, hey, I found you on TikTok or I saw your Instagram posts or I saw a Facebook reel. I'm, I'm doing my own market research, figuring out where people are seeing me and where they're coming from. So I'm getting more information of where I can put more focus in. If I get 10 out of 20 or 10 out of 15 people to say, I found you on TikTok, I'm going to go a little bit harder on TikTok, right? Um, and I'm just letting them know I personally respond to everyone. And now we're rolling into Q2 of 23. You can expect to see more from me and my group. So set your notifications to all. So I'm, I'm trying to make sure they don't miss shit, trying to get them to follow directions, right? Um, so and would you, you tag in a, like, would you also tag in a welcome post as well then? Or is that a bit too much? Yes. No, yeah. I do it. So... They oh, get a DM. From me. A yeah, mm -hmm. I I do a I do this when I when they get approved. They get a, a DM. Um, they also get an email from me if they left their email because Group Convert does all that for me. Um, and then every Sunday is when I'm tagging all new members 
uh, in in the welcome post where they're getting basically what I'm saying in this DM reiterated, but they're getting more details of what to expect. So it's three touch points off the bat. Okay. Yep. Question. Let's see. Can you hear me? All right, Liam. Later, dude. Can Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm driving. I didn't know. Um, so going uh, back to the the feedback loop. I'm sorry. What did we call it? Content loop. Um, so if you are like sharing a post that performed well, that got a lot of engagement, could you also do like a color post that says like, do you want to check out this post that did X, Y, Z? Because it was like a post that got like a lot of engagement and just feedback to that initial post. Is that okay yeah. to too? Or? Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. If, if you got one okay. post that's living in your group or living anywhere, uh, if you've got a TikTok that performed well, like it doesn't matter what it is, but let's just say, you know, for your group post, it done well, like there's, there's no laws or rules out there to say you can't do uh, 20 more posts that point to that one. I would, I would actually encourage it, especially if it's pre-selling um, or getting hand raisers for, you know, a lead magnet to talk or it's an offer post. Um, I've, I've done that a handful of times doing a color block post, like a purple or red post saying, Hey, here's how, uh, X, Y, here's how X person did X, Y, Z result. Um, and then I'll just like point to the comments and I'll link that, that initial post in the comments and it'll, it'll drive traffic to it. Yeah. I've done this a lot. I, I, one of the most recent ones, I think I did it with, with, uh, we had Thad and Demi come in here and run a, a call about how, how they launched triple C's and stuff like that. Uh, and then I, we we ended up putting it in the group and then uh, doing a lead gen post in my community, like color block posts, getting a bunch of hand raisers. And then I'm dropping the video. Right? Like, hey, who, who wants to check out the training of how our clients did multi six figures online or did, you know, X, Y, Z. And then you start getting all this engagement. And I'm just linking back to the other piece of content. Right. We, we do this in promos as well. If you look at how we do promos, we'll do like the anchor post, a live video. And then we'll start doing content that just feeds back to that, that video or that written piece of content. And you guys could do this with all of your content, right? Uh, hey, who wants to check out the post where I broke down a uh, business structure or, you know, how to close your first sale or whatever you're breaking down in a piece of content that you've already done. And you like that piece of content. Maybe, maybe that piece of content didn't get a lot of engagement and you think it's a really good piece of content, right? Well then use other content to seed it. Right, like use a, a short form. You maybe use a, a, a Facebook reel in your your Facebook group, right? Uh, any way that you guys can use the content loops to continue to like hammer people into more value from you, the the, the better off you're going to be. Right, and, and I know it's like a disconnect as far as like, hey, I put out this post, it's not generating a conversation, but you have to think about it from, say, you have post one. That breaks down what you're doing in your offer with with a CTA at the bottom for a hand raiser, right? And then you you put four or five other pieces of content that point back to that initial post. Now you just got more opportunities for people to start raising their hands, right? So it's like it's all kind of working together in like a little uh, spider's web, right? So I personally do that a lot too. Um, it's like I always feed back to trainings that I've done in the past. But what do you say to the people that have already seen that training? Because I have like a lot of people that are loyal people that engage, engage often. And I'm like, oh, I've already sent you this like five times already. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure you come across that too. Oh, yeah. Um, with those ones, I would specifically like, I, I would probably start hitting them up. You know, or like, if, if they're not already buyers, if they're not already... Uh, if there's somebody who's like watched four or five trainings or like you get it all the time, right? Like I'll put out a lead gen post in my group and people will start raising their hands, like send it to me. And it's like, you're, you're already in group juice, right? Like um, you're raising your hand to buy the product you're already in. Um, so 
the one thing you could do is if they're not already students, I would be hitting those people up and starting conversations with them because if they've already watched the video a few times or they've already seen a lot of content from you, then like, they got to make a decision as to whether they're ready to stop waiting or like, you know, they're, they're just looking to collect more and more information, right? Like I just need this next tactic. I need this next thing, right? Which is validating as a business owner, but it doesn't actually move your business along unless you actually start. So those would be like, top tier people that I would probably start hitting up if you're getting that a lot. Like, Hey, you've been like, even, even, even sending them a message saying that like, Hey, I noticed you dropped a comment on my post. You know, I actually sent you this training, you know, before, right. Is there anything I could do to help you get, get, get this thing going faster? Right. Um, I had somebody like yeah. two days ago who dropped a comment or something like that. Uh, and I sent him a message. I said, Hey man, like, uh, you know, you, you've been asking for this thing for 12 months. Like, what are you waiting for? Like, <laughs> you know, you, you've you been asking about seeing this doc for 12 months. You've probably already had it five times. Yeah. Right? Like, what, what what's the what's the wait? Yep. That it could have already been so, crushing it by now. Yeah, you guys will, you know, you'll start getting more and more folks like that. Like, they're never going to go away completely. Right. But there's just a, a few ways, like Nate was saying, to deter them. Um, I've even hit people between the eyes uh, before, and it, it does one of two things. One, they either uh, drop off and never message me again, or two, they they buy. So when I say hit people between the eyes, it's like, hey, dude, you've hit me up seven times about this. And, uh, you know, your next step is to, to get access to it, get inside. Um, if you're not going to do that, then there's not anything else I can do for you. Um, that's that's just kind of where I'm at. So let me know if you just want to, you know, leave it here or if you want to go ahead and pull the trigger and, and get rolling. Um, that's that's one thing. Um, and as far as the 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 people that are always looking for free stuff. Um, I had someone hit me up the other day that was like, Flip, uh, I saw what you was talking about. You know, folks can can get started for free. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I sent him a voice clip. I said, look, you can absolutely start. Uh, you know, making money online, you know, for free because you've got you've got a smartphone and you've got an Internet connection. You've got access to Google. And you've got access to YouTube. So I'll tell you, like I tell absolutely everyone who is not in a position to invest or just doesn't want to invest. Um, the only chance you have at being successful is how resourceful you can be. Right. You're going to have to work harder and longer uh, than, you know, folks that jump into our offers and our trainings because they're skipping all the bullshit. So you can do all this for free if you want. It's just going to take you longer and you better have some grit and grind and you better have work ethic because you're going to have to be a person uh, in this game if you want to get a hit. And uh, I kind of leave it at that. And I'll, okay. I'll be quick to paint a picture for people and let them know, like, you know, it's going to take you longer. You're going to have to work harder. You're going to have to fail more. Um, that's that's why people pay us. Um. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's see. Did we did we wrap this up? Flip. I don't even. Or did we get score lost? Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. We wrapped it up. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> um. So, some of you guys already have this. We've already ran a training on this, but this is my go-to. Uh. And this is really like this is what took me out of a funk in combos. Right. I'm, not everybody can be like Flip and be like a savant in dms uh i used to really struggle with conversations and this is what changed everything for me um so this is like my go-to hand raiser lead, lead hand raiser flow off of offer posts longer content now the thing to know if the relationship slash rapport isn't established this will not work as well so i just want to be clear with that like if you have brand new people coming into your group they've never consumed a lot of your content this flow will not work it, there, it will work sometimes, but it, but it's not going to be like the standard. This really shines when you've had people coming into, they've been consuming your content. They've been asking for those lead magnets, uh, you know, over and over and over again, right? Like being a little bit more direct, uh, you will trickle some sales. Um, but that's kind of where this will shine is with people that have been consuming your content uh, for a little bit longer. So I usually started off with... Uh, Hey, saw you were looking to check out some information on insert thing slash offer uh, or the topic of the actual post uh, and then doing kind of a, a 
credibility statement, right? Awesome. So I'm opening up a couple of spots to, oh my goodness, uh, solve a pain point for exclusive number of people to achieve X, Y, Z. Is that something you'd be interested in doing, right? So, uh, hey, hey there, saw you were interested in checking out some more information on Group Juice, right? Awesome. So we're opening up a couple more spots to uh, join us inside and who want to grow and monetize their own communities. Um, you know, obviously if there's no limited availability, you wouldn't put that, but uh, is that something you'd be interested in doing? Um, most of the time they'll say yes. Um, so then I'll say sweet. So group juice is primarily for those who are looking to uh, eliminate fancy funnels, fancy tech, right? What, whatever the potential topic of the content was. Um, it's primarily for those who are serious about getting started and have the ability to invest. So that's a powerful statement that I could put in there, right? Something that's going to very early on in the conversation, allow them to say yes or no. I like, nah, I'm just looking to build my business for free. Nah, I don't have any money to invest. I don't have a job, right? I don't have this. I don't know. I'm, I'm understanding that three messages in, right? Within the third message, I'm figuring that out. So I'm not talking to them for 82 years uh, before I have the ability to pivot the conversation. Because if somebody comes back after message three and is like, hey, you know, I, I just lost my job. You know, I, I'm, I can't, I can barely pay my bills. Then I'm going to say, hey, not a problem. But I actually have a free training that's going to help you get started here. All right. So I'm still giving them value. It's not like I'm just like, oh, well, screw you. You don't have money. Right. Like, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm injecting something there early in the conversation because I want to figure that out. I'm planting a seed because I want to figure out where to take the actual conversation. Um, as this mentioned, if they say no, either move them on, either move on or sell them something more suitable. You can down sell them. Uh, or or re-push them back on into valuable stuff in your group. They say yes, uh, we can roll on, right? So here would be perfect to have all the details handy for you on a quick doc video. Happy for me to send it your way, um, right? You're basically asking permission over and over and over again versus like, hey, here's this thing. Just get it, get it, get it. Like go to this link, right? I'm, I'm asking them if it's okay. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm getting them to give me permission to send them the thing. Right. Uh, and then, in, and I know it seems kind of redundant, but this is the flow that I use. Uh, so they say, yes, sweet. I have this thing ready to go. Do you have a few minutes to read or watch it right now and hit me back if it's something you want to move forward with or not? A very important one right here or not. I'm giving them an exit. I'm giving them the ability to say no. Like, hey, I, I know like to the offer or I'm asking them if they do have time to watch it right now. If they say no to this, I won't send the thing. If they tell me, hey, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at work right now. I'm busy. You know, I'm, I'm doing something else. I'm not going to send them the offer doc or I'm not going to send them the VSO because they're not going to come back and watch it. So if they say no, I'll, I'll ask them. I say, hey, well, do you want to give me a better time that we can resume this conversation and I can send you the sending you thing, right? Um, the reality is, is like, if you're just sending it, they're going to forget about it, right? Um, so, and then they say, if they say, yes, great, here's the link, right? Send them a, the link, the, the VSL, whatever you're doing. Uh, after you've checked it out, drop me a, a message back and let me know if you're in or out. Uh, this is the flow that I use a lot of the time, even to this day. Um, one, giving them the exit, right? Leaving it kind of open-ended on the tail end, you know, send me over a message if you're in or out. So I'm letting them know it's all good, completely okay. If they say, hey, the same for me, right? Um, but I'm leaving the dialogue kind of open on the tail end because then I can send them a message later, right? I can follow up with them. Um, so a couple different things will happen after this post offer sent. Assume, assuming they watched it and hit you back, one of three things will happen. Uh, they'll send you a message back, say, yep, I'm in. Or some of them will just directly go check out and buy. Um, they'll go, no, thanks. Not for me. I'm good. Or they'll ghost you. That's another option, but can't really get rid of that. Quick. Real quick, you you guys, you want to go for the no. I would rather someone tell me no, it's not a good time, instead of like, oh, yeah, this sounds good. I'd rather get a no than to be have, yeah. having the combo dragged on, right? I don't want to have to keep in people up. So we want to make them comfortable saying no. That, uh, that gives you and them power. The more power we give them, the more comfortable they are saying no, the, the better off we're going to be. If they say no, cool. 
you know, they'll, they're, they're still going to buy at some point. And as long as we maintain the relationship and, you know, chatting to them, they still see our content. They will buy eventually. Um, I said this probably sometime last year, probably said it multiple times. But if, if I told you guys, like, if you want to make 10 grand, then you need to go out and you need to talk to 300 people. You need to make 100 offers and you need to get to 90 no's. The more the more no's you get to quicker, the sooner you're going to get to your yeses. Right. It In a way, it is a numbers game. But the way that we teach you guys to, to do content and you know attract people, um, you're, you're still going to have no's, but you're going to get to the yeses much quicker. So like when someone tells you no, you need to think in your brain. It's like, OK, cool. They told me no. I'm off to the next one. If I get, you know, five more no's, I'll get to a yes. Right. The more no's I get, the closer I am to a yes. If I get to a yes, then I, re I repeat the process. It's like literally reverse engineer everything you do. When someone tells you no, it's not, oh, fuck, something's broken. No, it's just not the right time for them yet. Right. <clears throat> it's <laughs> I see Angie laughing at me. But that's how some that's how some folks will look at it. Uh, that's how I looked at it in the beginning. It's like, fuck, I've made 20 offers this week and every single one of them told me no or to fuck off. And I was like, oh, my shit's broke. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm a failure. This, you know, I'm just going to quit, blah, blah, blah. Um, but actually now it's like someone tells me no. Cool. They're just not ready. They haven't seen enough. I just need to post another piece of content, hit a different angle. I'll hit them up next week. I'll hit them up at the end of the month. Maybe they'll buy in quarter three. Um, either way, they they are going to buy at some point. So if they tell me no now, that's just a yes later. Write that down. If they tell me no now, it's just a yes later. Rock in that and and know that you're not doing anything wrong. It's you know we know all of you here have a great offer regardless of what you're selling. Um, because it's it's mainly. All the offers you got, there's something of ours or something that we've done a JV with someone or someone that we bought, right? So we know what you got is a good offer. So if it's a no now, it's a yes later. Um, so they're in, right? Obviously, if, if there's not a direct checkout on what you sent them, you could say, uh, great, that's awesome. Are you happy for me to send over the link? Complete the investment. It started now. Um, no, no, thanks. Not for not for me, as Flip was just saying, right? That's you. I would rather get to know faster. And the one thing that always comes back to me is I have a, a buddy who works, he's worked in sales forever, right? He's worked in solar sales and, you know, credit card processing sales. And, and like, he's like, get to like, get to know as, as fast as you can, right? Get somebody to say no, right? So you're not wasting your time. You can move on. Um, questions. If they have questions, um, you know, field them directly in a clear and confident manner. Um, this is why it's critical to go through whatever program you're promoting and yourself and understand it well. Um, good answers here can close the, the deal quickly. Shitty, uncertain ones can kill it fast. Um, if they ask three more than three to four questions, start getting in their life story. Um, that's up to you how you want to take it. But the thing to think about is your time is valuable and you don't want to become everybody's therapist um, because your business can become very painful if you're doing that. Right. If you're constantly just solving everybody's problems and DMs for free, it's it's a very stressful way to operate your business. Um, circle back, see if uh, circle back and see if you can get it done or move to the next lead. There's plenty of more efficiency. Right. Follow up. Uh, this would usually be a good rule of thumb. 24, 48 hours, 48, 72 hours uh, with a more aggressive follow up if you're in a mid promo coming down to the wire with X offer, right? Hey, just checking in with you. Wanted to see if you had anything, any thoughts on insert thing you sent. Um, hey, I just wanted to drop you a quick reminder that insert deadline, limited availability to grab it. If you have any questions, give me a shout. Little ghost emoji, just dropping this into your inbox. Uh, just bumping this to the top of your inbox, sorry. Um, or this is something that we picked up from Jacob, something he was using when he was promoting group juice. Um, flipping it onto them, right? Asking them a calculated question about what, how things are going in their business uh, in relation to the actual pain point that your offer solves, right? Hey, how's the group coming along? How, how's the group growth coming, right? How, how's your affiliate marketing business going, right? It's, it's kind of rubbing salt because you kind of know that they're struggling with that thing, but 
people want to talk about what they're doing or what they have going on in their business. So you're asking them a question that gets them to reopen back up. Yep. Bada bing, bada boom. 